<laughs> yeah. What is up everyone? It is Rachel. Welcome back to my channel. And so in this video, I'm going to be talking all about my experience taking the LSAT Flex. So everything from my Proctor U experience, the test day of experience. And so if you are new to my channel, hello, my name is Rachel. I graduated from UC Berkeley in May 2020, where I double majored in cognitive science and legal studies. And right now I am working full time at a law firm. So I've taken the LSAT two times, once in September 2019, when the LSAT was in person on my channel. I have an LSAT experience video from my in-person LSAT so I will have that link down below if you want to check that out because maybe you don't want to take the LSAT flex online and maybe you want to try to wait till the LSAT starts to become in-person again so watch that if you wanted to see my in-person LSAT experience and then I've also taken the LSAT a second time with the LSAT flex in October 2020 and so now it's like January and I'm like okay I finally have enough flex like mental capacity to be able to talk about my LSAT flex experience because I've honestly like blocked it from my mind. The entire LSAT test just gives me so much anxiety and I'm like I don't really want to talk about it but I feel like this video will be very helpful for other students because it seems like the LSAT flex is going to be sticking around. And yeah I have some vlog clips that <laughs> I took back in October and then I've like blocked it from my mind so I will be including those in this video. It has some like real life clips of me getting ready for the LSAT and the Proctor U screens and everything like that. And so if you are a student applying to colleges this year or if you're taking the LSAT soon and you wanted to chat, you should check out Study Hall College Consulting. It's a team of myself and other UC Berkeley students where we specialize in reviewing college application essays and consulting one-on-one -on -one with students students. So if you wanted to chat one-on-one -on -one about any LSAT related stuff or if you're applying to colleges and wanted to chat, definitely check out our website. We also have a free blog on our website where we post weekly tips for free, so check that out as well. So all of these tips are assuming that you have already signed up for the LSAT Flex, so you have to go to LSAC and sign up for the Flex, pay your 200 buccaronis, so freaking expensive to sign up to take this test at your house. So with the LSAT Flex, you sign up for an LSAT Flex test day and test time about two weeks before your LSAT actual test day. So you get an email about it about two weeks before saying, okay, on this date and on this time, the Proctor U site will open and then you can go sign into Proctor U. They give you a username and password and then you can go and click on a test time and day that you want to take your LSAT. And so at the specified time that the email says, you will get another email that says, okay, here's the link, here's your username, password, here's how you sign up. And so then you can go sign up for your test day and test time. And so there's a bunch of different options for like the different days that you can take the test on and the different times. You know, there's weekend times and there's weekday times. So if you're in school or if you're working, maybe the weekend time would be better. So I picked a weekend time because I was actually starting my full-time job the Monday after I took the LSAT. And so with this, a big tip that I have is to monitor Reddit. I started monitoring Reddit in August when the August LSAT happened to see like okay here's the timeline what's going to happen so if you're signed up for the March or for the April LSAT flex maybe start looking at the LSAT Reddit page now when the January LSAT flex is going to happen so you can sort of see what are like common questions that people have what's the timeline that things are going through and so I thought that was helpful so I could see like okay what's the August LSAT flex like so by the time October came around I was sort of familiar with like the steps that I needed to take in order to sign up for the LSAT and stuff like that. So my next tip is to test out ProctorU beforehand. So with ProctorU, that is like the other website that you go to take your LSAT Flex on. So you're not actually taking your LSAT Flex on LSAC's website. So you can sign into ProctorU anytime after you've signed up for the 
LSAT Flex test day and test time. And on the ProctorU pages, you can actually test your computer system and it would go through like your camera settings, your computer settings, your microphone settings, and make sure everything works. So when I signed up for my LSAT Flex time, I actually tested ProctorU also that day just to make sure. And then I tested it like the night before again to double check to make sure everything was still okay. I have ProctorU up now. I can't even use my own laptop to take this test because my laptop doesn't have like sound or mic access so you're not allowed to wear headphones obviously but with Proctor U they're recording you the entire time via microphone so they can hear all of your sound and they could technically talk to you so you need to have sound be able to play from your computer which my laptop doesn't let me do unless I wear AirPods and connect an external microphone which that's not allowed so that is sort of annoying so I've just been practicing taking this test on my brother's laptop since he has those things. So you can see the test is counting down one day and 22 hours. So basically two days from now, which is exciting, I guess. <laughs> I'll probably be more nervous what tomorrow since tomorrow's Saturday and the test is on Sunday but I still got two days I really want to test my equipment to make sure for Sunday that it's all set to go okay microphone I guess this default mic right webcam the speakers okay <gasps> missing or outdated extension I guess I have to download this which is sort of sketch i don't know that's sort of annoying that you have to download this random stuff it's gonna like hack this computer how do i download this <laughs> it can read and change all of the data display notifications read and modify data capture content yeah one star i feel like this is just stuff that they need access to in order to watch you and then like they even get access to your mouse and your screen but i don't know that's just sort of scary back to this page now looks like everything it checks out well i guess this works i'm gonna post on reddit <laughs> to see if like that's all we need to do so I actually had to use my brother's laptop to take the LSAT Flex. So figuring out those problems beforehand would be very useful, especially if your computer ends up not working or not being compatible. You want to check that early so you aren't just checking, oh, the night before, and then it turns out you don't have a working system. And so with that, you want to have your desk, computer, materials, room set up all prepared the night before. So the morning of my test, I could just be ready 100%. I did have to worry about anything so I have all my materials prepared five sheets of paper uh, um, pencils a pencil sharpener and then an eraser and then also pens my tissues as well if you know you start crying or something but I usually take the test using pens. I've heard horror stories where the proctor doesn't let you use a pen or mechanical pencil. Even though LSAC has allowed it, I just have pencils just in case. Also have my earplugs for tomorrow, so hopefully it goes without a sitch. So my next tip is to practice your practice LSATs in the same exact setting as you would for your real LSAT. And so, you know, a bunch of psychology always says that if you take your practice tests in the same kind of setting, so the same room, same setup, everything like that, as your real test, your grades actually improve. And so that's one cool thing about the LSAT Flex is that you are in your house or you're in the same kind of area where you would be taking your real LSAT. So if you're going to be using pens during your LSAT flex, practice with using pens. For me, I would actually ask my brother to borrow his laptop when I was practice testing so I could use his laptop and get accustomed to his laptop, how it feels, how it looks on the screen, stuff like that. For me, I used earplugs, so I would actually practice with earplugs in. So for the real test, I was already knowing what like earplugs feel like in my ear kind of thing. And so I just have these off of Amazon. I've actually had these since college because, you know, in the dorm, you gotta have earplugs 
earbuds. Otherwise, people are always freaking screaming all of the time. So I liked having earplugs because it makes it quieter. And you know, if your neighbors are mowing the lawn, you got earplugs in. I'm sure you can find earplugs anywhere, but I'll have these ones linked down below. Practicing, limiting all the variables and practicing how you would the real test is very helpful. So going off of the last tip is to practice your studying and practice LSAT tests at the same time of day as you would for the real LSAT flex. So for me, I was more of like a morning person, so I would always start studying for my LSAT at 9.30 in the morning, and so I knew I wanted to maybe pick a LSAT flex test time, like 9.30 to 10 a.m. For me, I wanted to get my LSAT done in the morning and get it done early, so I would always study in the morning to sort of simulate, okay, this is like a normal test day, this is like practice, and so my brain and my mind would be ready to take the real thing at 9.30, 10 a.m. on the real test day. So you don't really want to be like, oh, I'm studying at 2 p.m. in the afternoon every single day, but then when you pick your test time, you pick it for like 7 a.m. in the morning, like that doesn't really make much sense. So if you're more of a morning person, choose the morning and studying in the morning. If you're more of a night person, study at the nighttime and choose a nighttime test time. And so my next tip is to practice your LSAT flexes the exact way that they would happen on test today. So on test day, there are no long breaks. You get one minute in between each section. So when you're doing a practice test, make sure you only give yourself one minute in between each section to simulate what the actual LSAT flex test day would be like. And so if you have an accommodation where you get more time in between for breaks, practice with longer breaks in there to simulate what test day is like. You have one minute in there and let me just tell you that one minute goes by so freaking fast. Like in practice, I'm like, oh my gosh, this is so slow. But on the real thing, I was like, frick, <laughs> it's the worst thing ever. It's so fast during test day, I was like, I breathed like two times and I was like, holy crap, my one minute is up. So practice with the one minute, don't go over, don't go under, and just practice how the test is going to be on the real test day. And also going off of that, it's 35 minute sections, don't give yourself more time than 35 minutes. Unless you have accommodations, practice with your accommodations, but don't give yourself 45 minutes on a practice section if you're only going to have 35 minutes on the actual test because then you're just cheating yourself. Another thing would be to practice your breathing techniques. I think with stress levels with the LSAT flex, I think something that helped me was to do deep breathing exercises. And that might sound like, oh, I don't need that, whatever. It is really helpful, especially during those one minute break periods to practice your breathing, close your eyes, breathe in and out, deep breaths kind of thing. And it really helps to clear your mind, get less stressed. Even when I was feeling stressed, when the sections were happening, I would just focus on breathing and be like, stop it. You cannot get distracted. It's okay. Like you didn't know how to answer that question. It's okay. Move on. Breathe. Cause you can't get so nervous or so caught up on one question or one section that it debilitates you from doing the rest of the test. So I think doing breathing exercises, practice meditation and yoga is super helpful. And so speaking of yoga, I would also recommend to have a routine that you go through every day leading up to test day. So you know, about a month before I started like really implementing my morning routine before the test, because like I said, I wanted to take the test in the morning. So I would start waking up at the same time every day, then I would start doing the same exact thing every single morning. So I would wake up, I would do yoga, I would eat breakfast, I'd play with a dog, stuff like that. So so I had a routine. My body was accustomed to the routine because I was doing it a month before my actual LSAT flex. So doing the same thing every day is helpful because when test day rolls around, you don't want like to just start doing random things out of nowhere if you have never woken up at 7 a.m. before or if you're sleeping in till 2 p.m. every day, then all of a sudden you have to wake up super early. You do not want that for your body. So getting into some kind of routine every single day leading up to your test is very helpful so your body knows what is going on. So another thing new about the LSAT Flex is that a proctor is watching you throughout your entire test. And so this is new for a lot of people if you haven't taken online classes where a proctor or someone else is staring at you the entire time. But I feel like it is very nerve wracking when you take the LSAT Flex for the first time and you see your webcam light on. So like, you know someone is watching you or like can have the ability to watch you, which can be a little bit freaky 
freaky and cause you to be nervous on your test day. So I think something that can be helpful is to practice the LSAT where you ask a friend or family member to like hop on Zoom or hop on a call and they watch you through the webcam. So you can sort of see what it's like where the webcam is on, someone might be watching you, someone might not be watching you kind of thing. And so hopefully on test day that can help ease your nerves. Another thing is to be mindful of your pets. I know for us we have five cats and a dog now so I wanted to take my LSAT flex test in a room that had doors. I think a problem for us. Our cats roam around all the time and so they were actually scratching at the door trying to get into the room where I was taking my test when my test was happening. Studying and practicing like where you're going to put your pets during the test and making sure that they're quiet especially with our dog. She barks all the time so if you have a lot of pets or pets that are loud figure out how you're going to work that for your test day. And finally go to the bathroom before you take the LSAT flex. I know for me I saw so many horror stories of like Proctor U bad experiences or like things where it crashed while you were taking the test or where you got logged out of your Proctor U and you lost time on your section or anything like that and I don't know that made me so nervous the test should only take two to three hours but it ended up taking five or six hours because of like connectivity issues or other things having your plan set having your backup plans make sure you do use the bathroom beforehand because if your test did end up taking longer you know you would have to pee really badly and so there's just so many reddit posts of like people peeing themselves or buying adult diapers to take this test. For me, even though my test, I didn't have any connectivity issues or any Proctor U issues, I still had to pee really badly by the end of it. So yeah, that was my experience taking the LSAT Flex and some tips that I have for you all. If you wanted to hear my pros and cons of the LSAT Flex versus the LSAT in person, definitely let me know and I can make another video on that because my camera is going to die and the memory card is about to be full so I do not have time to talk about those right now but yeah definitely let me know if you have any other LSAT related videos that you wanted to see me do and so if you like this video definitely give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more I post every single Sunday and Wednesday at 11 a.m. Eastern time and so I will see you all next time